Mega Man X has a lot of weapons, and some of these weapons are absolutely amazing, so after making you guys wait for far too long, we are finally going over the best weapon from every Mega Man X game, X through X8. And, uh, yes, Zero's abilities are being taken into account as well. Mega Man X, the first Mega Man X game ever made, is one of the best all around and its weapons are no exception. This game might have the best overall weapon selection in the entire series, but I guess we'll find that out for sure by the end of this video. Let's go ahead and get things started though by looking at Chill Penguin's Ice Weapon. This weapon is surprisingly powerful when it comes to using it in stages and attacking enemies, plus the fact that you can bounce it off of walls and get ricochet kills is super fun. But on top of that, it's also a very useful weapon because you can charge it up up with the upgraded buster, you get this ice platform thing that you're able to ride on top of and extend your jump. You don't technically need this for anything because the main spot I always used it was to get that heart tank and sting chameleon stage, but you could always just kill launch octopus and get it for free. But who wants to do that? You could also use it to get the heart tank and boomer kawanger stage, but if you're a pro gamer like me and my subscribers, you probably know about the iceless strats and would never stoop so low as to use the ice platform to get this heart. Despite all of that, though this is one of the most powerful weapons in the game and is a sleeper pick for the best to be sure. Next we have Storm Eagle's Giant Tornado. This weapon looks super powerful because well it's a giant horizontal tornado but it doesn't do as much damage as you'd expect. It's certainly not weak by any means but with an attack that takes up this much of your screen I'd expect it to be a screen wipe. Plus the charge shot for this weapon is just a bigger vertical tornado so it's not super impressive. That being said this weapon is still super useful for mini bosses especially the one in Spark Mandrel stage, but all around, I wouldn't call it the best weapon ever, even if I do enjoy it a lot. Speaking of Spark Mandrel, his weapon is surprisingly lackluster. It's not necessarily bad, but it just doesn't do a lot. It doesn't do a lot of damage, it's weird to aim, and the fact that it goes up walls is a lot more useless than you think it would be. Its charge shot is pretty effective at least, but I mean, it should be powerful because it is a charge shot using your upgraded buster, so I'm not giving it any bonus points for that. So it's not a bad weapon, I guess, but it's a little bit underwhelming and certainly not the best. Speaking of underwhelming, we have Launch Octopus's missiles. Now I love missiles, especially when it comes to video game weapons, and these lock onto your enemy, so how could these possibly be bad? Well, first of all, I didn't say they were bad, I said underwhelming, and that's because they're incredibly weak. I would say they're better than Spark Mandrel's weapon, but they just don't do a lot of damage even when you charge them up for the special charge shot. I like the idea of this weapon, but I just think it should be stronger. Then again, if these missiles locked onto your enemies and were really strong, it might be a bit overpowered, so I understand why they're weak, but still. Come on. Next, we have Flame Mammoth's Flamethrower, which is, uh, very situational to say the least. I don't know if I would call this the worst weapon from this game, but we can all agree it's not the best, right? I mean, there are some stronger enemies that you can take out easier with this weapon than a lot of others, but it's very short range and just kind of awkward to use. Plus, if you have the upgraded buster, it'll charge up the entire time you use this weapon because you have to hold down the shoot button in order to use it. And unfortunately, the charge version of this weapon isn't that great. I mean, you can kill that one enemy in Armored Armadillo stage pretty easily, and I think there are a couple of other specific uses for it, but like I said, this is a very situational weapon and certainly not the best weapon for Mega Man X1. I will say though, it does turn into smoke underwater, which I always appreciate with fire weapons in Mega Man games. Shoutouts to Rockman and Forte. Armored Armadillo's weapon is a weird case. You shoot these blue balls, which Armored Armadillo never uses as far as I'm aware, but they don't do much damage, so they just aren't practical to use. Obviously, you need them for the fire final boss, but this is just like Bubble Man's weapon from Mega Man 2. Just because you need it for the final boss does not make it automatically good, especially when it's not that great against enemies. It's nice to use as a weakness for Launch Octopus as well, just because it's easy to aim and stuff like that, but I'm not really considering boss weaknesses in this video because every weapon is a weakness to some boss, so it would just make this video kind of weird and counterproductive, especially with how Chill Penguin's weapon messes up Spark Mandrel. I mean, good grief. Boomer Kawanger's weapon, on the other hand, is straight up one of my favorites to use. It's a lot like Quick Boomerang from Mega Man 2 because you can fire a lot of them and while it doesn't do the most damage, it also doesn't do the least by any means, which is surprising because of how quickly you can spam this weapon. Plus, if you miss a shot, it comes back to you and it refills your weapon energy, which is just super nice. But that aside, this weapon is just all around fun. It's fun to aim, it's fun to grab items with, and its charge shot is also pretty powerful as well. But I don't think it's the best despite probably being my favorite weapon. Maybe I'll do a video on my favorite weapons from each Mega Man 
the next game if you really want to see that, but that will have to wait for another day. Also, I forgot to talk about Armored Armadillo's charge shot. It's nice because it's a shield weapon that blocks attacks from weaker enemies, but the minute you run into an enemy that's not a pushover, your shield just breaks. This certainly isn't a bad shield weapon, which means a lot, coming from me especially, but there's one weapon in this game that completely outclasses it, being Sting Chameleon's weapon. First of all, the base shot from this weapon isn't super special, it's just a laser beam that does pretty decent damage. Not bad at all, but I think Chill Penguin's weapon is better in its base form. What makes Sting Chameleon's weapon so great though is the fact that its charge shot literally makes you invincible for like 10 seconds. This isn't a shield weapon, this is an invincibility weapon. Any segment in this game with a lot of enemies turns into a breeze as you just dash by them as fast as possible. It's so fun being able to use this, especially in some of the later Sigma stages, and if that wasn't enough for you, Mega Man X turns rainbow while using it, which is just a nice sight to see. I like pretty colors, and I like being invincible. So while Chill Penguin's Shotgun Ice is a very close second, I've got to say that Sting Chameleon's weapon is definitely the best weapon from Mega Man X1. Mega Man X2, the second Mega Man X game ever made, is very fun and a great sequel to the great Mega Man X1, but I've gotta say, the weapons took a downgrade from the first game. Don't get me wrong, some of these weapons are still great, but the overall average is a lot worse. For example, Magnus Centipede's weapon kinda sucks. It's a slow moving bomb that isn't even very powerful. If this thing did more damage, I might be able to forgive it, but it doesn't do more damage, so it's just a nuisance to use. When you use your upgraded buster to shoot a charge shot, it turns into a literal black hole, which you would think would be very powerful, but nope, it's not that powerful. I guess it's more powerful than those weak, slow-moving bombs, but relative to a real black hole, it's extremely weak. Okay, I guess that isn't a fair comparison, but let's compare it to Galaxy Man's black hole weapon from Mega Man 9. This one still sucks. I mean, uh, it's, it's still bad. It doesn't suck very well. You know what I mean. Wheel Gator's spinning wheel thing also isn't super amazing. This weapon is definitely cool, and I enjoy using it a lot, but if we look at things objectively, it's not very powerful, and it's also just not that good. Again, I think this weapon is cool, and I enjoy using it a lot, but it's slow, weak, and just takes up a lot of your time. Its charged up attack that shoots lasers is definitely better, especially when it comes to opening up those secret areas since you don't have to wait on the slow moving wheel, but again, it's just not that great of a weapon. But I do like it, and I don't know why. Morph Moth has yet another weapon that's underwhelming. This one is a little more powerful, I think, at least in base form, but it's literally a weapon that collects junk around you. Now admittedly, this is a little bit cool since it looks different on every stage you use the weapon on, but coolness aside, this weapon isn't all that useful. It's better when you charge it up, obviously, but it just isn't that impressive to me. There is an easter egg in this game where you can use this weapon to get a bunch of extra lives, but I'm pretty sure you need the head upgrade for that, plus that's not all that great in the first place. Next up, we have Sonic Slicer, which is Overdrive Ostrich's weapon. This is another weapon that's pretty fun to use, and I used it a lot as a kid, but if we're looking at its power level, especially after just looking at Mega Man X1, it just isn't that great. You can shoot a lot of them at once, and it's fun to watch them bounce around, but it's just a weak weapon for the most part. Its charge shots makes a bunch of them show up from the ground and fall back down, which is more powerful, but a lot of times you don't even hit the enemies you need to with this charge shot, and uh, I don't know about you guys, but I hate when that happens. The whole point of shooting a weapon, or anything for that matter, is usually to hit your enemy, right? Anyway, Crystal Snail's weapon is where things get a little bit controversial. First of all, as all my subscribers know I hate Crystal Snail. Don't ask me why, I just do. And his weapon has a weird arch that's hard to aim and doesn't work on half the enemies in this game. But when it does work, it turns them into platforms that you're able to walk on top of like the ice beam from Super Metroid or something. This can be useful for a number of reasons that I'm sure you're able to imagine, but I don't think it's quite enough to make this the best weapon in the game, especially when the charge shot of this weapon is literally just lag, like it just lags your game, that's the ability it gives you. That's what the charge shot of this this weapon does. I mean, it's a worse version of the double gear system for Mega Man 11, but way worse. Worse is an understatement. And because I don't like lag, this definitely will not be the best weapon from this game. Since we just went over a weirdly useful weapon, let's go over Wire Sponge's chain grab thing. Lots of people would assume this is a bad weapon because it doesn't do a ton of damage and generally isn't that useful for killing enemies, but it has a use that makes it pretty great. It allows you to grab onto walls and pull yourself closer, which lets you make jumps that you normally wouldn't be able to do. 
For example, I always go to Wire Sponges stage first. When I said this in one of my videos, lots of people said they go to Wheel Gator stage first, but if you go to Wire Sponges stage first instead, you're able to get the Buster upgrade capsule early in Wheel Gator stage by using Wire Sponges chain grab thing. This is a jump you normally wouldn't be able to make without the Dash Boots upgrade, but this weapon basically allows you to just sequence break the game. Now, does this make it automatically the best weapon in the game? No. It doesn't, but it does make this weapon a lot better than most people give it credit for, and since this video is all about weapons, I thought I would give you guys some insider knowledge from a Mega Man X expert, just in case you were unaware. Flame Stag's weapon, on the other hand, is both useful outside of killing enemies and also for just straight up killing enemies. Isn't that nice? Shouldn't every weapon do that? I guess that's asking too much. This weapon is just a big ol' fire wheel that's fun to use and pretty powerful when compared to the other Mega Man X2 weapons. But on top of that, its charge shots gives you another in-air dash, which is very useful and actually needed to get the Shoryuken from this game. Also, before you ask, the Hadouken and the Shoryuken are not weapons. They are upgrades, which is why you have to get them from a capsule, an upgrade capsule. But I already covered that in my videos on the Mega Man X upgrade, so you should go check those videos out if you're a big Guilty Gear fan and like these fighting game references. But even though this weapon is really good and one of my favorites, the real best weapon for Mega Man X2 is a surprise entry, Bubble Crab's Bubbles. Now you might be thinking, hey, these are just bubbles. How do they get the best weapon? Weapon. Well, I'll tell you how. These bubbles are first of all surprisingly powerful, and secondly, the charged version of this weapon is super useful. It gives you a bubble shield that constantly replenishes itself and only slowly drains your weapon energy to the point where if you're killing enemies, you could probably have this shield up for an entire stage. It is a much better version of Armored Armadillo Shield, but it's obviously not as good as literally going invincible like Sting Chameleon. And again, you guys know I hate shield weapons, but game respects game. This shield weapon is actually really good. Plus, to me, it was either between this bubble weapon or flame stacks fire weapon and while it was pretty close I had to go with the bubbles because they're more useful in base and in the charge shots so it's just super good all around but I will say once again flame stacks fire turns to smoke underwater which I will always appreciate but regardless of my appreciation bubble crabs bubbles are still the best weapons from Mega Man X2 Mega Man X3 seems to get a lot of hate, but I've made it clear this is one of my favorite Mega Man X games, if not my number one favorite, and I'm happy to say the weapons do an alright job of backing me up on this. Well, I'm not sure if they're better than the Mega Man X1 weapons, and if you were just looking at the gameplay, they might look a little unconventional, but I promise, these weapons are fun and good. Both. Those are what you want in a weapon. It has both of them. First of all, though, let's start with some of the weaker entries in the Mega Man X3's weapon arsenal. The gravity well you get from Gravity Beetle is just bad. Straight up cheeks. First of all, it doesn't even work on a lot of enemies, so you shoot it, it sits there and does its thing, and then nothing happens. Now, it does work on some weaker enemies, so it can be useful, like in this section here, for example, but even still, it's not super great. And charging this thing up isn't any better. If you try this weapon out on the wrong enemies, you'd be convinced this weapon does literally nothing but affect the bosses that are weak to it. Like in Tunnel Rhino Stage, for example, these green things stop your path, no amount of gravity well will ever destroy them or get them to move out of your way. You think that since it's using gravity, it would at least undo the lock mechanism by lifting them up or something, but nope, it does nothing even when you charge it up. So needless to say, it is not the best weapon from this game. Another weapon that is surprisingly weak is Neon Tiger's Ray Splasher. Now this thing basically gives Mega Man a machine gun-like attack that you would assume would be great, but it's just so weak and on top of that, the shots go everywhere, so you mostly just miss your shots and waste your time. It's not the worst weapon ever, but I feel like this weapon looks a lot stronger than it really is. It definitely has a few areas where it can be useful, but it is far from being the best. And the charge shots, by the way, just makes a disco ball in the air that also shoots and misses a lot. Plus, if it gets damaged at all, it gets destroyed instantly, so you better hope you aren't surrounded by enemies when you use it, which would be the whole point of this weapon's charge shots, but whatever. Next up, we have Tunnel Rhino's Drills, which are how I would have imagined Drill Man's weapon from Mega Man 4 being like, but the one in Mega Man 4 explodes. These, however, act like regular drills, which makes a a lot of sense. This weapon is pretty good against enemies and it can even break certain walls to let you access secrets, but it's not the best weapon ever, especially with the damage it does. Plus, its charge shot just gives Mega Man a drill hand. I mean, I like Gurren Lagan as much as the next guy, but this charge shot is straight up not that good and it holds this weapon back a good bit. Toxic Seahorse's acid bubble weapon, on the other hand, is really great and does a ton of damage. It is a little bit hard to aim, but luckily if you do manage to miss, it splatters off the wall and all the little splatter droplets do a ton of damage 
as well, which allow for some fun trick shots. I still wouldn't call this the best weapon in the game, but it's actually really good and useful. Plus, its charge shots makes two bouncy balls of acid that you can follow around, and that's just fun. It's a little underwhelming for a charge shot, I guess, but I enjoy it, and I don't know what else they could have made for the charge shot for this weapon, so I like it. It gets a thumbs up from me. Speaking of thumbs up, uh, you should like this video and share it with your friends and subscribe. You know, if you want to see a worst Mega Man X weapons video at least, you do want to see that, right? I I've only seen that in the comment section of every one of my videos ever, so you know what to do, guys. Anyway, next up we have a sleeper pick with Blast Hornet's weapon. This is a weapon I didn't give much thought to as a kid when I played this game because I didn't fully understand it, but it's actually really good. This thing captures enemies and allows you to walk through them without doing any damage, and if there's another enemy nearby, it will slam itself into it, destroying them both. I mean, this is way more powerful than I ever would have given it credit for, and I'm surprised this weapon isn't talked about more. Plus, if you use your charge shots, your attack locks onto enemies near you, and your body shoots out bees to kill them. I don't know how your body shoots out bees, and frankly, I don't want to know, but this weapon is actually really good. But is it the best? I don't know. I guess we'll find out. You better keep watching. Volt Catfish's Triangle Thunder weapon is also a banger of a weapon. Not only does this work as both a shield weapon and an attack, but it's also extremely powerful and just overall a great weapon to have when trying to speed run through a stage. Lots of enemies in this game are placed on the ceilings and the walls and stuff, and this triangle covers all your angles. Haha, <laughs> that's a geometry joke. You, you guys like geometry? The charged up version of this weapon is also useful because it unlocks certain areas and I guess it kills enemies too, but with the base attack as strong as it is, there's no need to charge up if you're just trying to kill enemies. This is definitely another candidate for the best weapon from this game though. Now my favorite weapon on the other hand is Crush Crawfish's Spinning Blades. I'll go ahead and say I know this is not the best weapon and I'm probably just biased because I've always loved using this weapon, especially as a kid. I don't even know why, it's just visually appealing and when you get those cool trick shots with this weapon coming back toward you, it makes you feel like a pro gamer, which all my subscribers are so they know the feel. The Charge Shots version of this weapon also gives you a giant deadly yo-yo and again, I just love the visual appeal of this. I know it's not the most powerful or the best weapon from this game, but I still love it and I won't let anyone convince me it's bad, because it's not bad, it's just not the best. But last, and certainly not least, we have Blizzard Buffalo's Ice Weapon. This thing doesn't seem all that great at first glance, but it's just way more powerful than you'd ever think it would be and very versatile with its uses. It's great against enemies, mini bosses, bosses, I mean this thing just has it all. Plus, if you miss a shot and it breaks, it turns into a spike on the ground that does a ton of damage. This might actually be the most powerful weapon in this game against enemies, but I don't know for sure and I'm too lazy to look it up, so just trust me guys, YouTubers are never wrong. Its char shots on the other hand isn't anything crazy, you just get a giant ice block on top of your buster, which is cool I guess by technicality alone, but it's not that great in comparison to the base attack. But is it the best weapon for Mega Man X3? Well, I don't know, this is a hard one, it's definitely between this and Triad Thunder. Sorry Blast Hornet's weapon, you're really awesome and underrated, but you don't function nearly as well against the bigger enemies. Triad Thunder on the other hand still does, it might not be as powerful as the ice weapon, but it covers a much larger area and lets you dash through levels. While on the other hand, if you're precise enough with your shots, you can still dash through levels with ease just by using this weapon. So this is a really tough choice guys, I think this is the closest contest we've had so far. But I think I'm gonna have to give it to the ice weapon for being the best. Triad Thunder is definitely great and I think it caters more towards newer players, so if it's your first time playing Mega Man X3, you'll probably have an easier time using this weapon and getting the benefit from it. Whereas the ice weapon is just straight up better for speed runners and stuff, but it's hard to use, so you gotta practice with it more. Again, both of these weapons are great and have areas where they're better than the other one, but I'm gonna have to officially give Frost Shield the best weapon award from this game. Wait, it's called Frost Shield? Why? It's not even a shield weapon. That makes it look like I've given the best weapon to three shield weapons in a row, and you guys know I'd never do that. Look, we all know this isn't a shield, but it is officially the best weapon for Mega Man X3. With the first three Mega Man X games out of the way, it's time to move on to the rest of the series, and I know what you're probably thinking, hey, aren't you a game early? Don't you normally show your face at the halfway point after Mega Man X4? Well, Mega Man X4 is when Zero finally shows up, and that's going to change this list drastically and make it more fun. Oh, what's that? You weren't wondering why I was on the screen a game early? Well, uh, okay, I'm sorry. It was rude of me to assume that. Please forgive me. 
That's right, Mega Man X4 officially introduces Zero as a playable character, so we have twice as many weapons to cover per game though, except Zero's weapons are a lot different than Mega Man X's. When Mega Man X gets a weapon, he gets a new thing to shoot out of his gun, you know how it is, you've played Mega Man X. Whereas Zero, on the other hand, learns a new ability that could be anything from a new sword attack to a mid-air dash. Also, before any goofballs in the comment section say something, yes, I know you can play as Zero in Mega Man X3, that's part of why I love that game so much, but Zero in Mega Man X3 doesn't get any weapons. He actually gives you his Z Saber, but that counts as an upgrade, and I've already made videos on that, so you know what to do after this video. Anyway, let's start with Mega Man's weapons and then move on to Zero's. I'll choose the best for Mega Man, a best for Zero, and then the best in the entire game overall for all the next games coming up, just so nobody gets upset. Let's get things started with Frost Walrus's Ice Weapon, since the Ice Weapons have been doing pretty well so far in this video. Well, for X, this weapon is just cheeks. You summon a big old block of ice, and uh, that's it. It's hard to aim, and land on enemies you want to kill. You'll probably damage yourself trying to use it, and it's not even that powerful. Its charged attack is a little bit better because it summons giant icicles from the sky, but even still, it's not all that great, so this weapon is far from the best. Jet Stingray's weapon is a little bit better, I guess, but I mean, that's not saying much. It's a weak little projectile that goes straight to the ground, so I guess it's nice for grounded enemies, but like, come on. Its charge shots variation lets you shoot a laser that doesn't go straight to the ground, which is nice, I guess, but still still not that great. Honestly, most of the weapons for X in this game aren't super great, but I think that's just because of the helmet upgrade allowing you to have infinite weapon ammo when you aren't using a charged shot. So if you got that and there were weapons as OP as Mega Man X1, this game would be even easier than it already is, and it's already very easy. That being said, we have another pretty bad weapon with Storm Owl's Cyclone thing. This weapon shoots in front of you, but uh, also behind you for some reason, and it's just pretty weak in general. The charged shot shoots out more of these things, but that's not much better, and I never use this thing unless I have to or it's somebody's weakness. The Cyber Peacock's weapon on the other hand is somehow even worse. This thing is like aimbot except you're stuck in short range which you shouldn't need aimbot for anyway. And it's charge shot is incredibly hard to get out because if you get damaged it cancels the attack out entirely. This is one of my least favorite weapons in the game just because of how clunky it is to use but I'm not sure if I would go as far as to say it's the worst weapon for Mega Man X4. I guess you'll have to subscribe and stay tuned for the worst weapons video to find out. Magma Dragoon's weapon should be a lot cooler than it is, but it only shoots up. Do you know how much that limits your use of this weapon? If an enemy is in front of you, you are probably unable to damage it because you point your buster into the sky and then shoot it. If you were able to shoot this thing forward, it wouldn't be that bad, but you can't, so it is that bad. Also, its charge shot is a Shoryuken, which is at least cool because I like Mortal Kombat, but it's still not the best weapon either, despite the cool points it's received. Web Spider's weapon is also really bad for attacking enemies, but you are able to use it as a wall-to-wall -wall jump off of, which is actually pretty nice. You can shoot this thing against spikes on the wall and wall jump off of them, which again is actually very useful and lets you get some upgrades later on. But as far as killing enemies go, this is not great. Plus its char shot version is horrible and doesn't even let you wall jump off of it, so this cannot be the best weapon. The twin slasher from Slash Beast is the first pretty good weapon we've seen so far. It is incredibly basic and if an enemy is directly in front of you, there is a chance you miss, but it's actually not a bad weapon. It's fun to use, it does decent damage, it's pretty and even its charge shot is decent and doesn't ruin the entire weapon. But despite this weapon being pretty good, there's a weapon that's a whole lot better, being Split Mushroom's weapon. First of all, it creates a rainbow shadow clone of you in base form, which is incredibly useful for killing enemies and racking up a lot of damage on mini bosses. This is clearly the best weapon in the game already, but if it wasn't enough to convince you, it's fully charge shot, literally clones X, and you have another Mega Man X on your screen that can run around and shoot, which is just super cool. So not only is this weapon cool and pretty with the rainbow clone, Clone, but it's also by far the best and most useful weapon in this game when it comes to Mega Man X. When it comes to Zero, on the other hand, all of his techniques are actually pretty useful, so it's hard to judge them. Split Mushroom gives you a spin attack in the air, which is super useful. Jet Stingray lets you do a dash in the air, which is obviously very useful. And Storm Owl straight up upgrades your Z Saber and turns it purple, which is a very nice color. Pretty much every one of Zero's techniques are useful because you don't have to worry about weapon energy, and they just all fit into your arsenal of attacks very naturally. I mean, dashing in the air, how is that fair to compare to like Web Spider's weapon that lets you stab a long electric sword? Cyber Peacock does give you this weird ultimate attack thing that's also useful, but this one does have weapon energy, I'm pretty sure, so it's not the best. But despite all of the natural upgrades Zero gets, I actually think Zero's best weapon is either the Flame Sword he gets from Magma Dragoon, or the Ice Sword he gets from Frost Walrus. See, the Flame Sword still only attacks up just like it does for Mega Man X, but you aren't stuck with it and just forever have it in your attacks. It's very very easy to use 
easy to be attacking something already and then pull out the flaming uppercuts. Plus, it's really fun to use. The ice sword, on the other hand, does the exact opposite, which is fitting because it's ice versus fire. When you're in the air and point your sword down and attack that way. Both of these are super useful and very similar, so it's hard to pick the best one here. I think I'm gonna have to go with my gut, though, and go with the flaming sword because I use that one the most. I mean, the spin attack in the air is also amazing, but I feel like Zero should already have that as an attack. And the midair dash thing is also a little bit overpowered for a weapon, but again, I feel like Zero should already be able to do that. The flaming sword attack, on the other hand, really feels like a weapon, is super useful, does a ton of damage, and is probably one of the most fun attacks to use in this game. So I would say that's the best weapon for Zero in Mega Man X4. But which is better overall? Mega Man X's split mushroom rainbow clone or Zero's flaming sword? Well, once again, this is a tough decision because they're hard to compare, but I think I'm gonna have to give it to Mega Man X's split mushroom clone because of how OP it is. Zero's flaming sword is super powerful and fun to use, but it doesn't feel overpowered. Whereas the rainbow shadow clone jutsu is borderline broken with how easy it makes certain parts of this game. So congratulations, split mushrooms rainbow shadow clone weapon. You are the best weapon from Mega Man X4. Mega Man X5 is a pretty fun game, but its weapons are even worse than X4, which is saying a lot, especially in X's case, so let's just get through this quickly. First of all, Duff McWhalen's Ice Goo weapon thing is way too weak. This is another weapon that just stays on the ground, and I think it goes up walls too, but it's just not good. And the charged ability is summoning a ton of ice cubes, which again, just isn't all that good. Squid Adler is a horrible boss with a horrible stage, and I hate everything about them, so the fact that he also gives you a terrible weapon, it just, it's just a slap in the face. I hate it. This is very similar to Elecman's weapon from Mega Man 1, except bad. It does cling to walls and make balls of electricity, but it's just super weak. Maybe I'm spoiled with Mega Man 1's Electman's weapon, but I don't care. The charge shots causes a bunch of lightning to fire onto the ground in random places, and it usually just misses the enemies, so that's fun. Oh wait, no it's not. Easy Glow gives you an RC airplane that you can control, and this is actually kind of fun, but it's so slow that it's not useful. You also stand in place while shooting it, which makes you vulnerable to everything. I do enjoy messing around with this one, but as far as being a weapon goes, this one sucks. The charge shot is at least better being a giant laser, but it doesn't make up for much. Dark Dizzy gives you Flash Stopper for Mega Man 2, you know the one. I mean, there are lasers in this game in the first Sigma stage, or the first Zero stage, sorry, so it makes sense I guess, but that will never be the best weapon in any Mega Man game. Also, you can't charge it, which is just great. I mean, just awful. The Skyver gives you a very weird weapon that's a lot like Top spin from Mega Man 3, which is another bad weapon. This one is actually somehow worse though. Sure, it's easier to use than Mega Man 3's top spin, but its damage is bad and it's going to get you killed. At least Charge Shot spawns in a regular tornado, which is nice, I guess, but it's still weak and not a weapon I enjoy using at all. Matrix has a fire weapon that does not shoot directly into the air, which is a good sign, but this one is very slow and it's a lot like Flame Mammoth's charge shots from Mega Man X1. If you hit an enemy directly, I guess it's not that bad, but it's just slow and very weak in general. Plus, the charge shot just makes it shoot behind you at the same time, which like, I guess that's not a downgrade, but that's not the biggest improvement I could have imagined for this weapon. Honestly, this weapon isn't that bad, but it's just really weak, especially for a fire weapon in Mega Man X. Axel the Red gives you a weird spike ball, and like, this just is not good. It's far from the worst weapon in this game, but it's clunky, hard to use, and simply not a good weapon. And the charged version of this weapon just makes it bounce across the screen, which is certainly an improvement, but like, this weapon is not good, let's be real here. The best weapon for Mega Man X in this game still isn't good, but it's Grizzly Slash's weapon by far. It does a lot of damage, is easy to use and aim, and the charge shot gives you a pretty useful shield, which is surprising. I don't know what it is with Mega Man X shield weapons compared to the classic series, but these things are all consistently better. So yeah, X's best weapon is from Grizzly Slash, but all of his weapons aren't great. Zero, on the other hand, gets a lot of useful upgrades that are all very similar to the last game. Weapon-wise, Zero still has the Flash Stopper and the Giga Attack thing, which do take weapon energy, but but these are not the best weapons for Zero, and I think we all know it. Beating Grizzly Slash lets you double jump and do a spinny attack in the air, which is super nice and very easy to incorporate into all your attacks. Duff McWhalen gives you a very cool midair dash attack, which is just nice, and the Skyver gives you another weird dash attack, but this one isn't great. Actually, I'd go as far as to say that it's bad. The Upwards Fire Sword returns, but this time it's electric, as well as the Downwards Ice Sword, but this time it's fire. So Zero has a lot of the same weapons as Mega Man X4, which I don't mind at all, because these are actually pretty 
good weapons. But I will say, there is a new addition to Zero's arsenal in this game, which is very similar to Split's mushrooms thing, which I liked so much in the last game. Of course, I'm talking about Axel the Red's weapon, where you can literally do the Split mushroom thing. Is this unoriginal because it was stolen from Mega Man X4? I don't know, and frankly, I don't care because it's still super overpowered and very useful. So, uh, you could probably guess, but it's definitely Zero's best weapon from Mega Man X5. But which is better, X's Grizzly Slash or Zero's Shadow Clone? I mean, do I really have to answer? It's obviously Zero's Shadow Clone, so congratulations, Zero's Shadow Clone. You are by far the best weapon from Mega Man X5. Mega Man X6 is commonly referred to as the worst Mega Man X game, but I actually don't agree. I enjoy this game. But most of that reason is because of Zero and his amazing weapons, which we'll talk about after Mega Man X. Now, Mega Man X still doesn't have that many good weapons, but these are at least better on average than Mega Man X5's weapons. Those were just awful. But starting off, let's take a look at Ground Scarvich's weapon. He is a dung beetle, and he gives you the ability to throw his poop. Not only is this vile and disgusting, but this weapon isn't even good. The charge shot of this weapon isn't great either, so there's no way this is going to be the best weapon. I mean, it's literally crap. Blizzard Wolfing's weapon is also really bad. It's really short range, does very little damage, and is a little bit pathetic. The charge shot is slightly better, but it's still not good. The only good thing about this weapon is that if you do it and land it successfully, you can make a block to jump off of, which is nice, I guess, and it can be useful, but it still sucks. Rainy Turtle gives you a water balloon-like thing, and uh, I mean, it's not as bad as it looks, but is it good? Not really. It reminds me of Aquaman's weapon from Mega Man 8 if it was a little bit worse. The charged version of this weapon causes it to hail, which can do a good bit of damage, but again, most of these charged screen wipes have a tendency to miss enemies, which nobody likes, especially when you waste all that weapon energy on a charge shot. I mean, come on. Metal Shark Player gives you an anchor attack, and this one also isn't that bad. It's better than the water balloons, but it's still not that great either. The charged version of this weapon is useful though, especially for those donuts and blaze heat mixes stage, and on top of that, it's a bunch of Storm Eagle statues which adds some extra cool points for this weapon. So this one is actually pretty good. I mean, I use it. I use it all the time. Shield Sheldon, on the other hand, is the opposite when it comes to X. This is the worst shield weapon of all time. It only blocks energy attacks, it's small, and it misses most other attacks and doesn't really do anything. Now, for Zero, it's a different story, but we'll get to that soon. The charge shot for X, though, summons four shells of the corners of the screen that shoot bullets from them. I guess that's not completely useless like the shield weapon, but I mean, this is pathetic for a weapon charge. Shot. It looks a lot more spectacular than it is actually useful, which is just a shame. Infinity Majinion gives you a laser, and this weapon isn't that bad either. It's actually alright. It's just a laser. I mean, it's nothing special, but we've seen some real stinkers, so this looks great in comparison. The charged version of this is also very useful because it summons a laser wall that is once again super useful against those dang donuts in Blaze Heatnix's stage. Commander Yamar gives you a circle of three bugs that can shoot bullets, and you know what? I'll say it. This is a better shield weapon than what shield shot gives you and it's not even meant to be a shield. I don't know what the deal is, but I like this weapon. It's decent and actually very useful. The charge shot just makes the bug stronger though, which isn't a lot, but still, this weapon isn't at all bad. The best weapon for Mega Man X though is probably the flame sword you get from Blaze Hedonix. This is very powerful, fun to use, and way better than most, if not all, of the weapons from this game. Plus, the charge shot summons a ton of fireballs that do a ton of damage, so this weapon is very good. I would say it's X's best weapon, but if you think Infinity Majinion's laser or the Commander Yamark bug army is better, I wouldn't blame you. Zero, on the other hand, is more powerful than ever with the weapons he gets in this game, so buckle up. First of all, Zero also has the bug shield thing, which is still very good, and he also has a giga attack type of thing, which is still good against the donuts, but these are not the best weapons for Zero, trust me. Metal Shark Player also gives Zero a nice downward sword attack, which is classic and always welcome. Blaze Heatnix gives you a cool fire sword attack, which is useful. Ground Scarvish gives you a weird in-air dash attack. I mean, you know the drill with Zero's weapons. Oh, Oh, and uh, Blizzard Wolfang lets you jump on the ceiling, or super high if there is no ceiling. I'm not sure what the idea was here, but I love this, and this alone is already better than everything X can do in this game. But Zero has two weapons that are by far the most overpowered things in this entire game, and to me, one of the main reasons I enjoy Mega Man X6. These weapons are surprisingly Shield Sheldon Shield, which I will explain, and the Insuizom, which is a spinning attack. But the reason these attacks are so good isn't obvious. This shield weapon is good because while your ZC 
lightsaber is going through this shield, it does damage every single frame. So if you know what you're doing, you can cause tons of damage and kill entire bosses and mini bosses with just one or two swings of your sword. A good example for this are those weird walls in Infinity Majinion stage. With this shield weapon, you literally melt them faster than you can imagine, which is super overpowered. But even better than this weapon, and what I think is the best weapon from this entire game and for Zero is the Insuizan. But the reason this is so good is because there is a glitch that makes you completely invincible. While using this weapon, you are invincible while using it, but once the animation for the attack is over, you can take damage again. But if your animation is interrupted by falling, for example, you just stay invincible. If you want to try this at home, the best place is in Commander Yamark stage on these turtle things. Just stand on top of it, do the attack, and you are officially invincible. You can walk through every enemy in the game, walk on top of spikes, and get your revenge on Mega Man X6. This game is famous for cheesing the players with bad game design and enemy placement, so it's time we cheese them back with this glitch. Now, some of you guys might be thinking, hey, you can't consider glitches in this video, but you know what? Yes, I can. This is my video, and glitches are part of the game, so I'm including all the ones I know into consideration. And because of that, this weapon is obviously the best weapon for Zero and the best in the game, so if you didn't know about that glitch, try playing Mega Man X6 again and have a good time. Because this paired with these shield damage things makes Mega Man 6 a completely different game and way more fun than anyone gives it credit for. So congratulations, Insuizan. You are by far the best weapon from Mega Man X6. Mega Man X7 is the first Mega Man X game on the PlayStation 2 and what a game it is. Hey, stop typing down there, I didn't say it was a good game. Regardless of if this game is good or not, these weapons certainly are not. Not for Mega Man X, and not for Zero either. First off, we have Soldier Stone Kong's shield weapon. Now, I hate shield weapons as I've said many times in this video, but this one specifically might be one of the worst I've seen so far. I mean, this thing sucks. I don't think it's the worst weapon of this game, but the hitbox is really small and hard to use. Plus, using a charge shot just summons a giant rock that splits in two once it lands. It doesn't even do that much damage. Splash Flash Warfly gives you a water gun, and would you believe me if I told you it's not good? Because you should, you should believe me. It just doesn't do much damage, and it's very awkward to use, so I don't like any part of this weapon. And charging it up just makes you shoot bubbles, so thanks for that, I guess. Flame Hyena gives you an alright weapon, it's a classic fire weapon that blows up shortly after you shoot it. It's pretty weak, especially when compared to the Buster, but like, it's better than most of the other weapons we've looked at so far. And at least charging it up just shoots out a straight up better version, so that's really nice. Right? Ride Borski, the enemy from Mega Man X2, gives you a weapon straight out of Mega Man X2, except worse. Do you remember Wheel Gator's weapon, and how I said it's cool and fun to use, but not that good due to being slow and fairly weak? Well, this is a slower, weaker version of that exact same weapon. I don't know why Ride Borski got upgraded to a Maverick in this game, and I also don't know why he chose this weapon out of all of them to steal from Mega Man X2, but this is just pathetic. Charging it up doesn't even shoot the laser beam like it did in Mega Man X2, it just shoots three wheels, which I guess is better than one on a technicality, but it's still not good. And by the way, it's not even called anything cool. It's called moving wheel due to being a wheel that moves. Awful. Terrible. Completely terrible weapon. Snipe Anteater gives you a missile, and I do like missiles as weapons, but these are really big and weak, which is a combination I do not like in my missiles. I mean, sure, a missile this big should not be as strong as it looks like because that would be overpowered, but come on, it could be better than this, right? Also, once again, the charged up version just shoots three missiles, which is only better than one off of a technicality. Vanishing Gungaroo gives you one of the weirdest weapons I've ever seen. It's like an explosion, but uh, just the explosion part. The weapon is literally called Explosion 2, so I don't understand this weapon. Unfortunately, it's also weak. Who could have seen that coming? And you'll never guess what the charged up version does. It shoots four explosions, which is better than three off of a technicality. Wind Crow Rang actually gives you a decent weapon that's fun to use. It is weak, but at least this one is fun and doesn't feel like it's supposed to be that strong. You can shoot a lot of these pretty quickly too, so being weak isn't that big of a deal with this one. And here's the kicker. The charged up shot shoots 8 of them at once, which is better than 4 off of a 10. But I think surprisingly the best weapon in this game for Mega Man X at least is Tornado Tunyon's Tornado Weapon. I mean, even this weapon isn't great, but it feels like a decent Mega Man X weapon that isn't ridiculously weak or weird. Plus, the charge shots doesn't just shoot a lot of tornadoes. It gives you a weird electricity shield that is more likely to give you health drops, so this is 
is clearly the best weapon for Mega Man X in this game. For Zero, on the other hand, we have more similar abilities from the other games, but this time, they're just worse. Vanishing Gungaroo gives you a pretty basic standing stool attack that isn't too bad. Wind Crow Wing gives you a stupid boomerang that is actually pretty bad, alongside a weapon which, in my opinion, is worse than the Z-Saber. Snipe Anteater gives Zero a missile he just doesn't need. Ride Borski gives Zero that same moving wheel, but this one at least looks cooler than the one X has, even though it's still not good. Splash Warfly gives you a weird spear and a long-range melee attack, which I guess isn't the worst, but it's still not that great. Tornado Tunyon gives Zero a crazy dash tornado attack that should be a lot better, but this isn't that awful. I mean, okay, it's medium. I'll give it medium. And Soldier Stone Kong gives Zero a Super Smash Bros. style counter that I just straight up do not like. It's not that bad, but like, come on, why does Zero need a counter? But the best weapon for Zero is easily the one he gets from Flame Hyena, which is that Giga Attack style firebomb that explodes when Zero touches the ground. I mean, pretty much every one of Zero's weapons are pretty bad, but having a Giga Attack is at least nice, so that's definitely the best weapon for Zero. Meaning we've gotta find out which is better, Zero's Giga Attack or X's Tornado Weapon. Well, I'm just gonna give it to you straight. Both of these weapons are bad, but it's X's Tornado Weapon. Zero's Giga Attack is only the best because his weapons completely suck. X's weapons also completely suck, but the Tornado Attack sucks a lot less, which is kind of ironic, I guess, but anyway. Congratulations, Tornado Attack, you are the best weapon from Mega Man X7. Mega Man X8 is the game I know the least about, so if I say something wrong about these weapons, feel free to correct me in the comment section. If I say something wrong about a weapon from any other Mega Man game, though, you're wrong, not me. I don't want to hear it. We are, of course, starting with Mega Man X, though, and you know what? These weapons are a major improvement for Mega Man X7 for the most part, but Optic Sunflower gives you fireworks. These are very pretty, but they aren't great for enemy killing. If you charge it up, however, you get more fireworks, so if you want a fireworks show, then this is the weapon for you. But, uh, if you you want to kill enemies, then pick another weapon. Gravity Antonion's weapon is a way better version of Gravity Beetle's weapon from Mega Man X3. This thing does what Gravity Beetle's weapon should have done in the first place. Not only does it kill way more enemies, but it also sucks up projectiles near it along with pretty much everything in its path. Certainly not the best weapon for X in this game, but I do like this one a good bit. Charging it up all the way though does feel like it should be more powerful than it is. I've died more times trying to make this useful than I have successfully done it, but maybe that's just a skill issue. Who knows? Gigabolt Mano War gives you a short range electrical attack. It does decent damage and can disable enemies, but with how short range it is, I would just rather play a zero, honestly. It's not an awful weapon though, all things considered. Charging it up just shoots out three at once, which is giving me deja vu to Mega Man X7. Burn Rooster's weapon is not great. It has the same problem as Wave Man's weapon from Mega Man 5, where you're not allowed to shoot it midair, which sucks. And on top of that, it's another clone of Flame Mammoth's charge shot. That aside, it doesn't do that bad against enemies, so it's not the the worst weapon for sure, but it's also not the best. Charging it up is lame though because it just shoots two at once, one in the front and one behind you. I guess that's useful sometimes, but I don't think it's worth the extra weapon energy cost. Earthrock Trilobite's weapon is very weird. You summon a weird crystal wall thing from the ground, which you can then run into and knock over on top of enemies. Honestly, it's pretty creative, so I gotta give it credit for that, but it's not all that great. It can block enemy projectiles and flying enemies though, so I guess it's pretty good for defense. And the charge shot version of this somehow stuffs an item inside of the crystal wall, meaning when you knock it down, you get a health or a weapon refill, which is pretty neat. So despite how it seems, this weapon isn't so bad. It's still not the best though. Bamboo Pandemonium gives you a big old missile, and these recent missiles are starting to make me change my mind about missile weapons. I mean, it's not that bad, but again, I just wish it was stronger. This one seems to be stronger than some of the other games at least, but it's still not my favorite weapon. Its charge attack shoots one missile in front of you while you call in an airstrike or something with several other missiles raining from the sky. Pretty cool visual, but it's not the best weapon from this game. My favorite weapon from this game is Dark Mantis's weapon, but I wouldn't call it the best. Despite that, it is my favorite to use. I mean, it looks cool, it's fun, it's pretty good against enemies, I mean, it has it all. And you'll never believe this, the charged version of this attack releases six of these things all at once. Isn't that just so cool? Joking aside, I do like this weapon. I mean, I literally just called it my favorite, but the best weapon for X in this game is definitely Avalanche Yeti's weapon. This one is also fun to use and looks cool, but it's just over 
overall way more useful against enemies and in general. This attack does fire at a weird angle, so you need to be jumping around to hit everything, but it's a small price to pay. This weapon also freezes enemies if it doesn't kill them within a few hits, which is always nice. And the charged up version gives you a cool ice shield that freezes enemies on contact, so to me, it's clear this is the best weapon for Mega Man X. Zero, on the other hand, has a way different story. His weapons, I'd say, are generally better in this game than X's weapons and are way better in this game than Mega Man X7. Now, they aren't as good as Mega Man X6, but I think X60 may be the most powerful iteration of Zero's weapons we've ever seen and ever will see. Even if Capcom somehow makes a Mega Man X9, which I wouldn't hold my breath for if I were you, unless you aren't subscribed, in which case you could hold your breath as long as you want. Just press that subscribe button and you could start breathing again. Anyway, let's start with Optic Sunflower's weapon. This spawns in a giant laser from the sky. It's the only weapon Zero has that uses weapon energy, but I'm pretty sure it kills basically every enemy in one hit, so it's definitely good. Gravity and Tunyon gives Zero a weird arching attack. It's pretty strong, but you have to wind up for it like an old cartoon character winds up a punch, and that doesn't really suit my personal gameplay style. Not a bad weapon, but I love spamming attacks, and this gets in the way of that. The weapon Dark Mantis gives to Zero is once again probably my favorite, but it's not the best. This just lets Zero spin around in the air over and over before dashing through the ground. It's very useful, and more importantly, it's fun to use and fun to watch. I still wouldn't call it the best weapon, but it might be my favorite for Zero. Gigabolt's Man o War gives you a classic dash attack that's pretty powerful and kills most enemies. Definitely a good weapon, but not the best. Burn Rooster gives you the classic downwards attack that Zero normally has, and it's pretty powerful as usual, but it doesn't auto-kill every single enemy, so you can't just spam this on the extra strong enemies or else you'll take damage. Avalanche Yeti gives you the classic up attack that Zero normally has, and as usual, this is very useful, especially when it comes to just naturally incorporating it into your moveset. Earthrock Trilobites gives you a new color for your sword that lets you deflect projectiles, which is super nice. It turns the Z-Saber into a literal lightsaber. Definitely a cool weapon that I appreciate a lot, but I can't call it the best. A weapon I can call the best for Zero, though, would be Bamboo Pandemonium's weapon that allows you to break through shields. I mean, this is just super useful for dealing with large groups of enemies. If there's a shield enemy in there, they'll also go down with the rest. Plus, it also looks like Mega Man X1's halfway charge shot. You know the one, right? The green one that looks like this. Anyway, most of Zero's weapons are really good, so choosing the best is hard, but I think I will have to officially go with Bamboo Pandemonium's weapon as Zero's best weapon from this game. But, which is better? Bamboo Pandemonium Shield Breaker for Zero, or Avalanche Yeti's Ice Weapon for Mega Man X? Well, they're both really good, but I think the game just gave Zero a ton of good weapons that incorporate into his moveset super well. Maybe I'm just biased after how bad his weapons were in X7, but I think Bamboo Pandemonium Shield Breaker for Zero is the best weapon from this game, so I'm going to officially declare it. Congratulations, Bamboo Pandemonium Shield Breaker. You are the best weapon from Mega Man X8. Those were the best weapons from every Mega Man X game. As always, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. It's been requested a ton and it's been a long time coming. This video also took a lot more work to set up than you would probably think, so I hope everything went smoothly and you enjoyed watching this video the whole way through. And uh, if you didn't, then don't tell me. I don't want to know that. I'd prefer to believe that this video went smoothly and came out well, so just leave a positive comment even if you hate this video. I don't care. Don't leave a dislike either. I hate those.